Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. Today we're picking up with what we left off with a couple days ago. So we took the example VS Code project from the GitHub repo for Raylib, and we modified it to support multiple source files so that we could take advantage of Make's capacity to selectively compile the translation units or the language units. To sort of unwrap what all that means, if you have multiple C files, but only some of them are changing each time you make a build, it'll only have to recompile the ones that are changing, which means compile times are going to come down. And when you're building a larger project or a larger game, you end up saving a lot of time. It also means you can split your code up into multiple files, which means you'll be able to organize the source code of your project a little bit better, which makes it easier to share with others, but it also makes it easier to maintain and continue adding on to it, which when it comes to game dev, it's a never ending process of adding, right? So at this point, I'm going to remove everything in here that was us testing things. So the second.c, second.h, I'm going to remove those. So we just have the regular main.c. I'll compile one more time to make sure everything's working. Now I'm going to use this folder that we just created, and I'm going to make this our template. So now we've got our Raylib template. And I'm going to go ahead and copy this folder one more time, and I'm going to grab an example that we've already done on the channel. And we're going to split out the code into multiple files and see what that looks like. Okay, so here we've got the Raylib Apple Catcher project, and I've gone ahead and copied my template and made an Apple Catcher multi file. We're gonna go ahead and take the Apple Catcher project, and I'm gonna split the source up into a few different files. This particular game is only 300 lines, so maybe it's not the best example, but I think it'll still be helpful. First things first, I'm just gonna copy the contents of the Apple Catcher main into here. I'm gonna hit save, and I'm gonna immediately try to compile and see if it works. Okay, so it's kind of working, except for the fact that I forgot to grab the sprites, and so we're gonna lose. Yeah, okay. Okay, here we go. We've got our apples, got my score. Everything seems to be working just fine. Now my editor's a little bit upset because apparently raymath.h is not found, but I know exactly what to do. So I'm going to go into C, CPP properties, and we can see that the include path includes the workspace folder, but we should also include workspace folder source. And now the red line is gone. So we're going to get a little bit ridiculous here, but all of this here is consts. So I'm going to grab all of these defines and move them into one include I'll say defines, I can't make up my mind. So defines.h, I'm gonna do my header include guard and paste all of these things in here. These were using the const int pattern before. I'm gonna switch these to using define so I can move them into that defines. Okay, so now I can remove these old things. I can copy these into defines and I'm just gonna track down all of these red spots and fix this. Okay, all the red lines are gone. All the defines have been moved into defines.h. And we've saved about 20 lines from the source. The next big thing is gonna be the functions because we've got a bunch of functions here. And once we get past main, we have all these functions here that, we're, that we probably don't need to keep in the main function. Now I think I will end up keeping this function in the main file because it's kind of the main game loop. But all of these basket and apple specific functions, we probably don't need to keep. The main problem though is that unset apple, set apple, draw apples, update apples, spawn apple, all of these functions right here implicitly access this apples array. So we're gonna need to modify them to, for us to be passing the array and then it can work on them. We'll start with unset apple at. So it currently takes an integer, but it's also gonna take an apple pointer called apples. Let's go back here and we're gonna update this accordingly. And then the place where we call it we're just gonna to wanna to pass in apples. There we go, so now the prototype, the definition, and every reference to the function are all now using the new format. So that's the only thing that I've changed about the function. Let's see if the game still works. If it didn't work, the apples wouldn't be disappearing properly, we would be losing lives because they wouldn't be properly despawning when they collide with the basket. Because the game is still working properly, we can tell that this type of change is going to work on all the other functions. So I'm gonna go do those now. Okay, looks like it's working just fine. And now we didn't do all this for nothing. The next thing is to move them all into their own file. So we're gonna say apples.h and we're also gonna say basket.h. Now apples.h is gonna take the apple definition. Apples.h is going to need to include Raylib. And then Apples is also going to take all of these Apple specific functions right here. 
but we're also going to want to include apples.h in a file called apples.c where we're going to take the definition of all of those functions. Now I'm seeing a lot of red here and one of the reasons is because we want to also include the defines and that's going to get rid of some of these like the count but then we still have a few more so the score needs to be incremented the basket needs to be I need to be able to get the basket position the lives and there's also a texture so we'll take these one step at a time first thing is the lives and the score let's add a new one called score.h and score.c in score.h we want to define a sorry an int get score and an int get lives and we also want an add score and a remove lives take these functions jump into score.c, include score.h. Now, in main.c where we created score and lives, we're gonna take those away from here, and we're instead gonna define them in this file. I've decided that remove lives should return a bool that basically says whether or not we're still alive. In order to use bool, I'm gonna to wanna to grab raylib again. Now, going back to apples.c, when we wanna increase the score, we can say add score, and we want to remove lives, we can say remove lives one. And we say if it's less than or equal to zero, well, this thing returns true if it's greater than zero. So we can just take the negation of that. Now, of course, remove lives and add score are not familiar to us anymore because we need to make sure to include score.h. There's remove lives. Now in main, we might be referring to score and lives still here. So we're going to want to include score. And anytime that we said lives, we're just gonna go ahead and say reset score to score.h we'll add. And then here we can just set lives to max or starting lives. There we go. So we can just say reset score here. And down here we can just use get score and get lives. The basket's gonna be easy because get basket position is the kind of thing we'd wanna put into basket.h anyways. So again, we need to use vector two here. So we're gonna to wanna to make sure to include raylib here. Wait a second, we don't need to write this function. It's already over here. So basket x position. Basket x position gets moved into the C file. You can see that we need the defines. Let's make a game state .h. So we'll grab the enum and stick it in the header. Stick the enum in the header so that we can always access the enum itself. And then we'll add a simple function. We're also gonna add a simple set. Need to include math.h so that we can use this fabsf. Okay, so it seems like we want to call game end here, and we still need this texture. We're so close though. For this atlas, I'll show you a different approach, which isn't the kind of thing you'd want to do a whole lot. But if we know that there is a texture 2D called atlas apple, then at the top of this, I can say extern texture 2D atlas apple. So basically what I'm saying is somewhere else in the program, at some point, we're gonna link a file that is going to define this. So don't worry. Once you once you link the executable and when the game's actually running, you'll be able to get you'll be able to find it. <laughs> It'll exist. This isn't the greatest because there's not really um, an obvious link. I mean, you can control click and it'll show you where it's coming from, but it's just not the kind of thing you'd want to have huge banks of it. And if I wanted to include this in more than one file, I've got to copy this to all those other files now. And it's it's just not easy to keep track of. Whereas if you're doing a lot of copy and pasting, it might make more sense to take the include path. Still just going through the whole project and making sure that we're using all of our new. At this point, our main file is down to 142. Now at this point, draw basket could probably live inside of basket.c. So in basket.h, we add the prototype. And in basket.c, we add the definition. 
there's Atlas Basket, so we're going to have an extern. I failed to notice that this game end was never rectified. I think in this case I'll also use, you can see that you can use extern for functions as well. Let's see if losing still works. Yeah, looks good. Now notice when I build here, I don't know how well this is going to be come out on the video, but when I build, it does main.c, apples.c, basket.c. But there's also gamestate.c and score.c that are other source files, but it didn't need to compile those because I didn't make a change to them in what I just did. So every time I build again, if I'm only going to change one file, it's only going to show that change in one file. So I could change something in main.c. For instance, I should have done this originally, but unload texture. So I'll update main.c, and if I hit compile now, I go back to this other terminal, it only had to recompile main.c and then link all the other ones. So this is the core of why we do the multiple file approach. It allows us to cut down on our compile times. We're only rebuilding the units that are actually being changed. Now, just for the record, these unloads need to come before the close window. So we could probably get this cut down more. I imagine the game end, game init, and a lot of those things could be moved into their own file. And we could probably pull most of these game specific, the floats, the array. So then we would really just have a bunch of includes. To some of you, this might not actually be a much better solution, having all of these little include files. And it may not be immediately obvious in the benefit, but trust me, if you're gonna be working on a game where you're doing it in one file and that one file is 2,500 lines, yeah, it gets hard to read. And then beyond hard to read, it gets slow to build because I know if I need to change something about the apples, I'm looking in one of these two files, apples.c, apples.h. So I'll go to apples.h and if I don't see the function that I need here, I can create it. Anyways, hopefully this has been interesting to you. I'm gonna go ahead and update the original Apple Catcher to have this layout for the project. Thank you so much for watching. If you liked the video, give it a like, subscribe to the channel, leave a comment, let me know what you wanna see next time. I've got a bunch more language tutorials coming, a bunch more Raylib tutorials coming, and of course, Raylib demos, which is probably my favorite thing to work on. Thanks again, and we'll see you next week.